Alright, so now we're going to just remove a few things over here to make it a little bit cleaner and then we'll create a digital asset out of that. So for example, the last point over here I don't want to include. I'm going to do this different. So let's go over here. Um, where are we? We have the line over here. Yeah, it's completely the line above. So, the line that we use with the resample. So, what I'm going to remove is the last vertex. I don't want to have it anymore. So, we'll keep it as it is over here. So, this is the view. Now, what you might see over here as well is something you can have on your video part also is that if you see these edges over here they don't like to they don't like to be they don't look to be so precise and the reason is it is showing both faces at the same time so to increase that precision or to uh, to do the thing that most 3D softwares are doing is we're going to activate the back face culling so again we do this with the display properties we go to optimization and display properties was pressing D optimization and here we see culling we're going to remove the back faces like that and we suddenly see also because of doing that that we have some problems some of the objects that we generated over here are inverted so this is also something we need to fix so let's go back over here and remember what we've done we've swept the circle around the two lines to create uh, these objects over here and so what we're going to do as well is over here we're going to reverse those polygons and reversing again is just the same thing it is reversing the U and V values from one side to another side and of course this is also reversing how the polygons are oriented but also this is something I'm going to explain later on in class so now this tool is complete uh, we can work with it we're going to add a few things just to make it a little bit more interactive uh, what I want to include for example is over here when I transform, I like to use this tool over here. Uh, I don't want to do it with values, I'm just going to do this with controlling this point. So I'm going to make this persistent so that wherever I am, whatever node I look at, I'm always going to see this specific controller. So I can be wherever that I like to see the result of this and so like that we've created our very first procedural stair good now having all this like I said before this is just like one big graph I want to make just one simple tool out of that now we do this by collapsing the whole graph into one thing now you can do this in two ways, you can click over here to collapse it or you can press shift C. If you press shift C you'll see it creates one subnet for you. Now this subnet is just like a folder as you can see over here. We have the stair object, we have in the stair object the subnet and it's like a box because within that we see we have everything there, the whole graph okay let's go back up now this is just a collapse folder now we're going to create a digital asset you can see a digital asset as being a tool in fact so we're going to create our own tool something which also will appear over here in all the things that we have so hang on I'm going to close all of these so like that we're going to make sure that we're going to edit over here with digital assets we're going to create our own grouping 
So select the node over here and go to where is it? Here. Create digital asset. So there are several things that we can do. Over here we have the operator name. This is going to be the name that appears right uh, as uh, I believe it's over here in the top view and then you have the operator label once you drop it in. But we're going to give them both the same name. So let's call this stairs stairs we don't need any inputs because uh, we're not going to make it dependent on one object coming in those are things we can do later uh, in, in future digital assets but for now we're going to keep it just very simple so minimum and maximum are going to stay zero and then we're going to save it to a library so I have created a library you can create one your own so make a directory for example and I've created one over here for NHTV and I'm going to create my digital assets library now what is important to know that it says it is a library uh, this means that you can have multiple digital assets within one library so for example you could call this library stairs but I think that would be a waste uh, because probably you will need them to create much more digital assets or uh, much more uh, digital asset libraries OTLs so what we're going to do we're going to give a more common name for example architecture like that that's going to be the OPL, OTL so we have a stairs digital asset within our architecture library now this is also something of a nuance um, nuisance this thing uh, it says current hip file only well normally seeing what you want to do is to make sure that the digital asset is going to be available at all times so every time you build something and you put it into a digital asset you want to include it as being a part of Houdini and like that you can make the program bigger and bigger each time that you use it um, but I'm not going to go deeper in, in this uh, right now uh, I'll just keep it simple set it to current hip file only this means that this digital asset is only going to be available within this scene we're gonna see this later how we can change that okay accept and then you get like this very big panel a panel which gives you all kinds of controls things that you can set and so on we're gonna go over just a few of them we're not going to view everything because it's really a lot that you can do with it first of all parameters um, there are a few things that we want to control and we want to control it in a very easy and global manner. For example, we want to control the position of this final point. Let's take uh, right over here a float tree for that, float vector tree. And there are two names. One name is the one that you use in expression, so it's best, best to keep it short. So let's give it the top position. top position so this is the label this is the thing that you're going to see right here the type is a float vector tree that's all okay and the range everything is just fine except we're gonna change just a few things and those are the default values what we're going to do is we're gonna make sure that it's up one in uh, y direction and one in z direction because if, if it is zero, zero, 0000 then we don't have a stair by default it's just going to be like something which is sitting there only on that part on that part now from the moment you press apply you see it appears right over here it is not connected yet it is just part of the interface that you've created so we're going to create just a few things more for example 
the stair width. So, for example, width. with we're also going to add the barrier right over here barrier like that so the barrier height Let's make it shorter. Bar height like this. Bar height and well, there's there's lots and lots of things that you can add the controls that you want to have. You can choose yourself. Uh, let me add just another one. Bar length. Like this. Um, well, that's that's it for now. You can you 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 understand the principle. You see, there are like lots of different kinds of interfaces that you can add, but we'll just keep it simple as it is right now. So, having all of these edits, we're going to just change a few values because, as you can see again, all these default values are just set to zero. Now, stairs width, we're going to make this a value of 1, the barrier height is 0 0.8, and the bar length, something we add on top of that, is going to be 0 0.5, something like that. So now we have the, all these things set as default values. Let's pull this down, go inside of this node, and let's see all the things we have over here. So, um, first what I want to connect is over here, the height. So we're going to, instead of just copy and paste the channel, we're going to type it in manually. So, ch is the expression for a channel, slash for making it relative. So we're going up one time and over here we will call it uh, the barrier height. And if you get close enough with letters you see it will give you an auto completion for that. So this is one. And this one we call channel do exactly the same go one up because we need to get it out of the digital asset A barrier length oops like that and as you see it's just falling a little bit short with the default value so we have to change this um, we can also create a controller for uh, the, the width of all these sections, but I'll leave that up to you. The top position, so this one uh, is top pos channel, go up, top pos x, and I'm just going to copy this one and paste it here over here, top of Y and top of Z this is our default value ok um, there's still one that I need to connect 
okay stairs with it was with that I had to add over here it was the wrong one that's better and it's over here this link that we need to add so it's over here at the peaks up remember that we use this one to make things shorter or longer we're gonna use over here channel bar oops going up one time bar length like that so if we go up now we see we have our digital asset of which we can change just a few things and we can change over here the top position from one side to another going up going down etc now to add this controller well it's making it just a little bit more complex so I'm not going to show this right now also this is something for later lectures so this is your digital asset now something which is very important we did all of these connections after uh, we did this and we didn't accept or saved it so make sure to accept what you've done right now only right now all the things are being saved so if you now go to digital assets and you select stairs and you put it in there you see you have your digital asset as a tool and you can start playing around with those values over here so this makes your very first digital asset now if you're going to send me your scene make also very sure that this digital asset, the OTL, the place where you saved it is going to be included uh, in the RAR file. I need this file as well. If not, it's not going to work because it's just going to show up as an empty thing. And when it is empty, it's not there and I'm not going to grade it. So make sure to add it. Right, uh, so this concludes this part of modeling. Now, the next part, what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to apply a texture onto this object and I'll do this first by adding UVs over here on each one of those stairs. We're going to keep this very simple as well. And then we have something we can texture. And then I'll show you as well how we can render this uh, in a preview render.